In this short lesson, we will look at an object moving in a uniform circular track. Now, let's consider a circular track. It's circular because the radius is the same all along. The radius does not change. <laughs> as long as the vehicle is free or the object is free to move along this circular track, the only way by which, let's say we have a car along a circular track, The car can be at this point, the car can be at this point, the car can be at this point, and the car can be at this point. Now if it's moving around in the counterclockwise direction, as shown, if you recall what we did earlier, the direction of velocity along at, at any point is equal to a line tangent to the point and in the direction of motion at that point, which means that the direction of velocity is in this direction. This is V. Let's call this VA. This is VB, this is VC, and this is VD. Even though the object is at different locations, the only condition for the object to maintain this circular track is for the speed at A to be equal to the speed at B to be equal to the speed at C and to be equal to the speed at D. So what am I saying? I'm saying that an object is considered to be in uniform motion when it moves around a circular track at a constant speed. Now, even though it's moving around the circular track at a constant speed, what is happening is that its direction is changing. As long as its direction is changing, because velocity is a vector, now the velocity of an object can change if three things happen. If its magnitude changes. For example, I'm here and I walk very fast to this other side. Now, my speed increased, so I accelerated. But if on the other hand, my speed remains the same, but my direction changes, such as an object moving around in a uniform circular track, my velocity changes. If I throw this pen up and down, both the velocity and the direction changes, sorry, both the speed and the direction changes along the path, so the object accelerates. So, so the velocity of an object can change if its magnitude changes and its direction remains the same. If its magnitude remains the same and its direction changes as an object moving along in a circular track or if both the magnitude and direction changes such as a projectile in a closed path. So as long as the direction is changing, this object is accelerating. And we know that acceleration by definition the average acceleration is equal to the change in velocity divided by the time taken. Now, understand this. Let's say we, we choose Let's say we choose two points. The, the 
this is the initial point which is the initial velocity and we choose another point right here this is the final point with a final velocity like that it should be a straight line v final the angle subtended at the center is delta theta now this distance from here to here is delta S, the arc length. The radius is the same, that is RR. So, if I draw that little triangle, it's gonna be look like this. This is R. This is R. This is delta theta, and this is delta S. Now, if, if delta theta is small, then The angle between VI and VF will also be equal to delta theta. So which means that if we draw this is VI this is VF this will be change in V and this is delta theta. It is worthwhile for you to understand that as long as theta is small, this angle and this angle are similar triangles. Remember that the, the magnitude, remember that VI is equal to VF, which is just equal to V. That would mean that delta S over R will be equal to delta V over V. So if we cross multiply both sides, we will have V multiplied by delta S equal to R multiplied by delta V. If we divide both sides by delta T, this is delta T, this is delta T, what do we have here? Delta S over delta T is V, because this is change in distance of a change in time. So we will have here V squared equal to change in V over change in T is A, so this will be R multiplied by A. So this would mean that A is equal to V squared all divided by R. So the acceleration of the particle moving around a circular track is given by A equal to V squared all divided by R. This is what we call the acceleration of a particle moving in a uniform circle. But just like we know, acceleration is a vector quantity, which means that it has both a magnitude and a direction. So the one million dollar question is, what then is the direction of the acceleration of a particle moving around in a circle? How do we determine that? To determine the direction of that acceleration, observe this. A is defined as delta V over delta T at all times. Delta T is greater than zero and uh, it's a number. Which means that the direction of A is the direction of delta V. Let me say that again. The direction of acceleration is the direction in which the velocity changes. So keep in mind, 
that delta V is V final minus V initial. So let's use a little bit of vectors. Let's choose these two points and use a little bit of vectors. If you see this, VI is pointing in this direction. So negative VI will be like that. So this will be negative VI. So if we start by doing this, this is equal to VF plus minus VI. So if we draw our VF like that, this is VF minus VI, which will be like this. Then the resultant will be a vector from the tail of A, the first vector, to the head of the second vector. So this will be the change in V. So what do you notice? You notice that the acceleration of vector A is pointing towards the center. So this is A pointing towards the center of the circle. This is only true provided the object is moving with a constant speed around the circular track. Let me say that again. It is only true provided the object is moving with a constant speed around, a, around the circular track. Now, let's expand this idea further. 